presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks, we'll do this again, starting over. Look, the Dow's up 213, 35,000. One of the reasons being Boeing and the financials. And what I was trying to point out before was that because the bonds have uh, dropped so sharply, the yield has gone up, and that really helps the financials. So we've got a very select move to the upside. We've got the S&P in the Dow. We've got the S&P at this particular point coming back from a sharper loss, but it is still down eight points at 447, 4,047. 4, 4, 4, it's underneath the Chapman Wave instant uh, right there, right there, that track, that repellent zone. Uh, it's underneath it. If at any point in the next couple of days, there's a push into the 42, 4462, 44 and and a break above 44.65.40 for a new leg B. That's going to be important. And what with with the uh, all the, the bills that have to be passed this week, a uh, lot's going on. So my thinking was that there would be a rally and then a pullback, and the pullback would be where you make a decision whether to buy what's happening in the H formation. But in fact, what we've got is a straight up leg and then two days of sideward action in the S&P. The Dow is different because look, the Dow's just started a leg B and it's a very strong leg B up to 16 at this particular point. The MACD is just cross positive. So instead of having a stalling formation coming back to the 34,400s where we can make a decision on whether or not the, the market's going to go much lower, or whether it's going to be a support level, we've continued higher because of the selectivity. Now, what's also important is if you're looking at the QQQ, look at this. The QQQ is down 4, 4.12 at 369.19. That's the pattern that we've been talking about and one of the reasons why we still remain short the, the uh, QQQ. Now, the other thing we're looking at here is the IWM, the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 up, I think, at 225.63 as a high, we've gone to a leg B, 225.65. Nope, we need another three cents and starts a, a gray leg B. But I have to consider that there's a chance because the nine period moving average has just crossed a pos positive. Um, the day's young, but that's the way it is right now. There's a chance that the Russell 2000 iShares, that's, that's the small caps, is in fact holding better, is acting better, and is kind of complementing the Dow by holding in the upper range of, in this particular case, the rectangle formation of the weekly chart, and could find some leadership. And it also does have the oil service stocks. It has a lot of um, areas that are possibly in favor right now. If you look at the oil, look at crude oil. <clears throat> Huge move, up a dollar forty-eight to seventy-five forty-four, up almost two percent. Uh, is it breaking out? Not yet. Breaking out in the weekly chart and starting a leg D in the monthly. But I think this week it will. The continuous contract just needs to get to uh, seventy-six twenty-three, and it starts leg D in the monthly chart. Wow, what a fascinating market! <laughs> Let's go to the um, gold. Gold is trying to uh, hold. Steady, it's up three at 17.54. As I said before, it's, it's in play on a, on a kind of an intraday basis. But basically, it has been making lower lows and lower highs. It's still underneath the falling axe uh, uh, trend line, uptrend line in the weekly chart, which goes to about the 1800, 1813, really. Um, and we're down at 17.54. You look at silver just lagging. Uh, yes, it's having a green candle right now, up 32 cents at 22.75, making it try a kind of a, a successful so far dreaded H pattern. But until it trades in the 23.50s, it's just stuck in the lower range. Look at high grade copper, high grade copper. High grade copper is up. 0.006 at 4.2915. It's also within a range. 
holding quite nicely. I like that. I always like to look at wood, the iShares, timber and forestry ETF. Yep, holding much better in the low range, but also trying to come back. There are signs of rotational strength, and the rotational um, move that we've seen is really important to keep monitoring. Why? Look, Bitcoin was up at the 53,125 level just two, three weeks ago. Plums, slumps down to the 40,000 level, just above the 200 period moving average, trading right now at 43,770. It is in play like gold, but also within a range now. It's made its highs, just kind of consolidating in and out. I wanted to show you the TLT. Look at the TLT. Look at that move. Peak D, underneath the peak, major peak D that was made back on the, I think it was July. Yeah, July the 20th. At 152.71, it's been down to the 145s, ran to a peak D, and Chapman made the fourth highest peak. Peak D often sees a sharp reversal as it did back in that July high. Well, it hit one just under 152. It went to 151.79 on the 22nd. And then today's low is 145.88. So this is saying in that rectangle formation in the weekly chart, we're stuck in the lower range. And we've got to watch it because it is the higher rates are really helping the XLF, the uh, SB Select Financial Spider Fund. And what's really important about this at 38.72, it does have American Express, American Express, big legs, C to the upside, gap up today uh, within a rectangle trying to test the all time high area. And look at JP Morgan, JPM, JPM is uh, trading. Also, just underneath its all-time high, both of them will go uh, extend in their monthly charts very favorably. If they can go just about a point or so higher. This is going to be very important, um, how the market continues to play out here, because this rotation is saying, if you're looking at sectors, XLK, this is the select spider fund, the tech spider fund. Look at this pullback that we've seen from the 159.89. This is one of the few times that I can ever say there's no other way I can really count this. Well, there are, but just strictly speaking, that was a peak C, peak C failure. I don't know what to, what to say other than um, it's a peak D in the weekly chart, and it's it's really struggling. It's it's come off the 151 low that was made. So it goes almost to 160, it goes to 151, bounces to 155 in the middle of the range right now. It needs to get to the 157.80 level to say, I'm back in favor. Look at the SMHs, uh, the semiconductor index. Uh, down today, down to 270.36. And what's really important about this particular pattern is that there is a chance that if the semiconductor in index, the SMHs, this week start to trade under 265, a close under 265, would say, uh-oh, stalling motion. That's, a, that's it for the moment for the semiconductor index, because if it breaks into the 277, 278 area, that's all-time highs. That's fantastic. So it's a very important moment. Uh, I'll be back. I think we've got a break coming up. There it is. I got this one. I'll be back in a moment. That's a chat from Tiger to Christian's Hour. Dow's up 231. S&P's down five and a half. We'll be back in this diverse, bifurcated, split bar. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm typing in here, triple wave three, four, reverse, one of the techniques I developed years ago. All right, so we, I, I showed the uh, SMHs, I showed the uh, XLK, I showed the QQQ, and mentioned in the den was, always show the IGV. Well, I've done all the work on the IGV. I don't always show it, but let me just do this here, uh, tech. Okay, let me just make this a little smaller and then we got ourselves all organized. So make this about an 11, make it red, and there you are. Okay, so what we're looking at is the IGV, which is the iShares Expanded Tech Software ETF, makes a peak G all time high at 428.90. The very next day, the high is 428.83. I should have put 83. I think it was 73 or 83. Um, I'll just make it 80 for now. This is a Chapman Wave uh, um, two bar reversal. <laughs> I was typing too quickly, I guess. Chapman Wave two bar reversal and uh, comes down very sharply to the 404 level. And now, and then it has a rally into the 420s, but now it's a 414 back down again and it's just flipped from an L which is long to S, which is short, meaning sell. In other words, it's gone back into the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, which was a propellant zone. Now it's back inside. It's also the falling axe formation, and it's a peak E in the weekly. And that's the reason why I was so cautious, because so many of my charts, look at this. Now let me go through this again slowly. SPX.X, that is the S&P. Peak D, the peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology, the fourth highest peak, that's where other things can happen. That's where you lift your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, and just be real careful. And what do we do? We've had three uh, uh, candles sharply lower since the 45-45-85 high, went down to 43.05 low uh, Monday, exactly this time last week, and then had a spectacular rally. Um, not as good as the Dow. Look at this rally in the Dow. Uh, look at the weekly chart as well, a peak G, unusual peak G. Now, what I normally do is I go G slash C, and as long as the starting point hasn't been taken out, that is a legitimate thing to keep it as an alternate count. Where was the starting point? The starting point was with the Chapman Wave. Look at this. This is called, here we go. This is a peak D, 
and within three but within two bars actually not even three bars it makes a new recovery high for a chapman wave instant restart and that instant restart takes you to peak e slash a f slash b takes a long time finally gets to g slash c so the dow is the one that still has because of this rotation into the different areas some selective very selective um strength and that strength is showing up with a fabulous look at this 261 up in the dow i must say i i had thought from this and i discussed this in great detail i don't want to go over it now than to just show uh, just briefly here look at the low that was made in the dow right here you see this green dash line where every time it's made this kind of v-shaped pattern after within i should say the Chapman wave here we go dark news cloud cover each one of these rectangles look how it's gone sideways and then made one sudden splash to the downside and then it took off rectangle splash the arch formation splash to the downside rectangle straight down um, and then so breaks out of the rectangle here it does exactly the same thing and now what we've done is we've gone right back again so this is this is something um that you've got to consider as a, a pattern that if it repeats, you have to consider that it is a template that the market is treating as almost a benchmark, even though it doesn't know it's never heard of this Chapman Wave uh, phrase, dark news cloud cover. But look how it's acting. And that V-shaped pattern, now the stochastic is running sharply to 55. The unbalanced volume actually now is a little weaker although it made the V-shaped recovery, and the MACD crossed positive, and that's really important. But you haven't got the nine-period moving average over the 14-period moving average, and that should... How does that happen? I just lost it. Unbelievable. All right, well, this has just crossed positive. The histogram has gone to uh, a, a plus 16 instead of zero or negative so that for the dow is very positive it's just about to bump into the inside track repellent zone let's put that in yes and we know we're talking apples to apples it's right at the line right now there it is pink all right so that's the falling axe formation plus it's got the inside track repellent zone so we'll see what happens just a uh, the rotation is just spectacular the way just the market is refusing to go down uh, as a unified uh, overall spectrum. Instead, it's just very selective. But on the way down, when it makes a little V-shaped bottom, uh, we got to watch that very closely. And that includes the S&P, which is now down over two, uh, just under two. Uh, and that's really important. It was down much, much more before. Uh, oh, I need to go to, I did that, did that, did that. Okay, now we can get to some of the questions that I had. FXI, could I look at that? Yes, FXI's failing it's really struggling it's made the arch pattern that goes from an h to an m lowercase h to lowercase m took out the left side low now it's in it at 38.55 this is where if you start to see the histogram on the macd improve that can help if you see the stochastic at 21 percent get to 25 or 28 percent that'll help but so far it's doing nothing if you want to look at the stocks that we often look at like the baidu's uh, Baidu is holding very nicely. It didn't take out last week's low. Uh, it's down 78 cents at 155.79. Not bad action. It's okay. Um, INMB. Now, let me just see a question in the den. Yes. I, oh, very nice. It made that oh, uh, 2376, 2379. So that was a peak D, very sharp decline. Gets a down arrow right there comes back 30 point goes just above 30 and it comes all the way back down to the 18s uh, sorry the 16s and now it's trading at 20.93 yes this is nice action and it is forming a cup formation in mune bio inc uh trading at inmb 20.93 trading up 77 cents right now if it's able this week to close in the 2173 area i would say that's a really good sign and should try for the 22s, but it also needs to hold 19.30 at this particular point if it's going to suddenly pull back. But it did make that requisite peak D in the buy mode, the Chapman Wave 
uh, just for the moment, I'll put a plus sign. I'll have to look to see, does it get a down arrow? Well, it doesn't have to. So it's a PD in the weekly chart and a leg C, immune bio, main leg C in the monthly chart. Nice action. IYT, this is so important. Spent a little time with this over the weekend, but I, I did my overview section, my overview video uh, for subscribers to my opening call. And I mentioned that this is the first time we start to see strength in the transports, the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index. And if it can start to take out the 256s, 258 resistance area, that's going to be fantastic this week if it can do that. If you look at the U.S. Air Alliance, uh, jets being helped, of course, by Boeing. Look at this, 24.82 at 52 cents. That's a nice action. Look at the V-shaped pattern in the, 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 the flag pattern in the, in the monthly chart. Very good. I'll be back in a moment with Pastor Chapman. Take it to Christian Tower. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi folks, so in a one-minute chart, we're looking at this little breakout here, leg F, in the two-minute chart, A, B, C, D, E also, could have recycled, but what's really important about this is that money is starting to find its way. Look, here's the 10-minute chart. Last night, I thought it made a really nice, around about uh, 10 o'clock-ish, it made this peak E, and it couldn't break above for, oh, about an hour, or more than an hour. And then all of a sudden at 2 o'clock, I didn't see this. Uh, I was sleeping, of course. Um, it went to this right arm extension. What's the difference between a rogue wave and a right arm extension? 
a right arm extension isn't just one sudden bar that, that, that breaks above the previous high. When everything looked like it was negative, you were correct in being short. In this particular instance, there's a steady move up, but only one of them of the technical indicators that I use, in this case, the MACD, was moving up and confirmed it. The stochastic just barely popped above 80% and within two bars broke down again. So that is a right arm extension going to a new high. It's usually a new high or a recovery high of the particular chart pattern you're looking at in whatever time frame. And then it just steadily breaks down. The rogue wave goes zoop to the upside and the same bar almost uh, has the people who are short saying, oh, I should knew I shouldn't have co I shorted, I'm covering it here at the new, new high. And the people who got out earlier said, oh, I knew I shouldn't have sold it. I, just a fantastic stock. Why did I do that? I'm going to get, buy back a little bit. And it hangs out at the new high just long enough to get everybody in and out. And then whoosh, it goes down again. Remember, that's the high the sign of the beach says high tide at noon and at 12.06 you get that rogue wave that didn't see the sign, splashes everybody, and then the tide continues going out. In this case, it's a little different. And you also had a Chapman silent doji right there, the bar before. So this is a 10-minute E-mini. Uh, s and and then it just goes down, down, down. Look at the pink line, and then finally this pink line is turned green, and now we're looking at the stochastic at 87, and the MACD is positive, and now all of a sudden you've got the S&P futures positive one more time. And now this one, because of the Dow moving so sharply high, 257 up, this is a good sign, and it's just saying that the market is being selective, and it's saying, look, if you've got a problem like the QQQ, and you want to go down, that's fine. Now it's down three. You're just independently weak. But we're going to stay with what's working, and that's the long side. So that's the way we're looking at it right now. Um, a couple of questions came in here. Where did I see the questions? Uh, Queb. I don't know if I've still got Queb all notated. Let me just check. No, I don't. I have it in the day. He made a peak scene. It's pulling back. I can't even remember what it is. I keep looking at it. This is... Crane shares, CSI, China International ETF. Yeah, well, this looks very much like the um, FXI. But um, I suspect that it's the rotation that's really important. And that's why the market, after making that Monday a week ago low, is trying to find some support, trying to find some excuse to continue moving up. Now, what's happening is it's ignoring that debt ceiling, debt, it's just whatever it is that's, that could be a handicap in the political arena. And I don't want to deal with it politically right now. I just want to look at the charts and say, look, if the Dow at this particular moment is going to be able to, if it's able in the strength that it's showing up, 253, if it's able to this week, any day, I'd like to say push above, but I'm going to actually make it a little bit more detailed. I'm going to say if the Dow closes, so far this is outstanding action, but if the Dow closes above 35,250, I just have to say fabulous action. And maybe September for the uh, Dow is going to be um, a, just a consolidation month. And October sees a new high. I mean, this is, I, I just have to look at this. And if it fails here, it has to give back this entire candle with a low today um, in the right here, 20, 30, 34,739. Yeah, so if at any point this week we close under 34,500, it says, uh oh, yeah, comes that arch formation. So far, it doesn't look like it really wants to do that because it's just constantly finding strength somewhere. And that's really important. And uh, so, with that said, a couple of stocks that we want to look at here. Uh, let me just go through this. Sintas has its earnings come out in another, uh, is it tomorrow? Anyway, early this week, I think it's tomorrow. And it's in gray leg B underneath the peak E doji candle. It was made at 409.80. Did I not type that in? No, I didn't. 409.80 all time high in Sintas overalls uniform rental CTAS up $1.96 at 403.44 right now. Gray leg A because under the previous peak, major peak E. 
great egg B at this moment. And in the weekly chart, it made a peak E, but holding really nicely. Hit the 14-period moving average. Look at that black line right there. And rallied sharply last week. And now it's making a new uh, weekly recovery high. Not all-time high, but a recovery high. So these are very important. When I look at my cash in the index, which is Sintas, Amazon, Amazon still weak down, 74, 33.51. <coughs> so... That says that the cup, the arch formation in Amazon is still in, in place and that the 3289 200-period exponential moving average is absolutely key to hold on a closing basis. Uh, that's cash, C-A-S-H, SPY is the other one. SPY coming back nicely today. It's down 24 cents at 443.67. Now, this is the one that I have an alternate count and that alternative count I can call a, a probably a peak G slash C, and almost certainly that decline says it's a G. So I'm going to take out the C, and I'm going to put an upside down. This is that uh, upside down V, which is the there we go carrot, and I make it red. And it says you did have a, a, an arrow, down arrow, but then this particular market extended even higher, and then it made a top. And what can I do? For those of you who are used to track wave notations, what am I about to do? I'm about to grab my straight line. I'm about to go to the doji candle all-time high. I'm about to draw in a, a trend line to the downside and a, a lower highs and much lower lows. And I'm saying that SPY, the S&P spider fund, made an all-time high of 454.05, right here, 454.05, and I believe that was September the 3rd, but let me just double check. September the 2nd, let's put that in there, there we go, 9, 2, 21. I make it red because that's in a cell mode. And it goes trough A, trough B, and that's it. So another thing that we look at in the Chevrolet methodology on the way down, yes, we do the notation, but it's how severe and quick you get either a single leg down or two legs to the downside and then reverse up. So this is really important going from the fifth from the 454 level, thank you for pointing that, uh, in September, early September, to right to the low that was made last week at the 429 level, and now we have 443. And we've got the chat wave rolling exclamation. I'll draw it in and show you what we're going to be looking at. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here on the 27th of September, Monday, and we're looking at the Dow up uh, 251. S&P is now turned positive a point. We're going to go to Mark and Ford Collins. Mark, how are you? Good, Basil. How's it going today? Good, thank you. You'd like to look Good. at? Um, I've got a couple plays in the oil services area. I've got the Good. OIH in the mid-180s, and I've got RIG in the 335 area, and I'm wondering what you're, if you can give me some targets on those. So RIG is the oil service ETF. It's doing very nicely. It's up 10 today, 200.47. This is a leg D. There's also a left side, right side, uh, left side uh, shoulder uh, around about July in the 178 ish area, 175. And then there's the head down to the 160s that was down mid August. And then it rallies and east side we went into the rectangle formation and it fails. So this is not your classic head and shoulders in the sense that I don't have really a cup formation or anything like that, but definitely a higher left side. The head is lower. That's a gap down with an island reversal. And that was the low of the 17th or 18th? 20th. The 20th of August at 164.41. Rallies up, comes back down, and it's gone peak A, peak B, peak C. And then the right side, uh, inverted head and shoulders, has a low of 174.85. Um, and now it's trading at 199, and that's leg D. Now, the, the usual thing is I say in a, a leg D, you could be a little careful, raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, because that's where other things can happen. The MAGD is making this uh, M-shaped pattern. The stochastic, so that's still positive, and the histogram is very positive. The stochastic is okay. It's at 55%. It is rallying, but it's not great. And the nine-period moving average has made a V-shaped reversal. But yes, on Friday... And today, you've got the nine-period moving average crossing over the 14-period, and both of them are crossing over the 200-period moving average. So that's just suggesting that I can look to the left side for some kind of a target, and the OIH, the target would be, first of all, halfway into the candle, that big candle of the 14th of July, 215.89 high. 200.66 low, that's a huge candle. So right in the middle there, let's just say around about the 208 area. So that's the 208 area would be a target that I'd be uh, focusing on as where if there's a break above that, then all of a sudden the high of that candle becomes a focus. But that's Right now, the way it's acting, especially with crude oil, I'm going to put the two together, even though they're not 100% related, directionally they are. This is a leg E in the uh, crude oil at this particular point, up $1.37. And if you look at the OIH again, and now you put it back, you're talking about RIG, which is um, uh, Transocean Limited Offshore Drilling Oil and Gas. It hasn't made a leg D yet above the peak C. So I like the fact that it broke out of the falling axe formation. So let me just go this. You want to know the parameters? And I'm saying 
in leg D. You want to see an extension, preferably in leg D, but it's okay if there's just a bar of consolidation, maybe Tuesday, and then Wednesday it breaks to the upside, could even be an instant restart, but you really want to see all the trading this week above I would say above 196, today's low is 195.53. I'm going to even give it a point. Between 196 and 194 should be very strong support if there is a digestive phase this week. And I think we're getting close to it. Uh, and if you look at, so that's the, the downside. The upside, all I can say, oh, let me go to the 120-minute chart right here. 120-minute chart, yeah, a little extended. So this is peak, so that's A, B, D. It's in, it's in a leg, let me do that again. A, B, C, D, 17, yeah, E. So it's in a leg E with a gap to the upside, and that's why I, I think it confirms what I'm saying, is that we're just a little bit overbought on the shorter term. The weekly chart in OIH is starting to improve. You want to see the nine period moving average over the 14 and the MACD turned positive. There's a lot that still needs to happen in the oil service weekly chart and the monthly chart is improving, but there again, it's the same sort of thing. So all I'm saying is within the context of what you've done in your entry point, great entry point, I would just, I'd have to give it a couple of days. Everything about it is suggesting it wants to go to the 210, 215 area over the next six weeks or so. It could happen very quickly or it could be slow. It'll happen very quickly if we're above 205 by Tuesday or Wednesday. So that's that's uh, OIH and RIG is almost the same story, but the numbers are different because it hasn't made, and the MACD is just turned positive again for an M-shaped pattern. Stochastic's lagging sharply is down, it's at 44%. On balance volume is good. Nine period, funnily enough, today is just cross positive. So I like I like this uh, the, the chart pattern of rig. Actually, I like all of the oil service ones that I looked at over the weekend going into this morning. And um, all I can say is that if oil continues to be as strong as it is, it's a good sign for the economy, number one. But also, I think it's going to help enough stocks. And as um, as we saw. Uh, uh, last week, I think it was, when we were looking at this, I'd mentioned that there are a lot of oil service stocks in the um, small caps. So that also helps them. So I do like it. Key support is at 346 to 333. I'm inclined to say in this particular one in rig, I try to hold it longer, even though it could be whippy. And you're talking about a stock that is up 8.5% right now. It's only up 30 cents. So because it's low price, the percentages are going to be quite heavy if it moves even just you know 25 or 30 cents. But in this particular instance, that's the support is in the 355 area to 343, I'd say. And I like it. And if it, if it closes... Well, first of all, if it goes above $3.84, it starts leg D. That's that's where you want to see the stochastic, preferably above 57%, preferably 63%. And if that, that occurs, then it helps the week. The daily helps the weekly. And the weekly still got a lot of work to do, but that's what you want to, do, you want to see. There's a consolidation this week. It shouldn't be more than two days of just consolidating. The third day you should see a new recovery high. Hope that helps you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Appreciate it. My pleasure. So, folks, a couple of questions. Let me just get to them. Where did I write them down? Uh, yeah. So, could I look at certain stocks? I will do that right now. CLF. CLF is a, a Cleveland Cliff. Cleveland Cliffs is, is trading flat roll steel, iron ore pellets. Uh, it's in the steel industry, obviously. It's up 44 cents at 20.94. Is this the move from the 200 period moving average after that peak C? And that, that was an all-time high failure. And an alternate, I could make that an alternate account. I didn't. I should have done that. No, I couldn't. D, E, F, G. Yes, I could. G slash B, and it becomes a G. Okay. Whew. I was worried about that. I don't want to see too many stocks make peak C all-time highs and fail. So this one's pulled back. I like this only as a trade because it's trying to fill the gap. Would I buy it right now? I, well, I, that was a question. Would you buy Cleveland Cliffs right now? I'd nibble on it as a kind of a starter position if I haven't got any at all. 
and then I just have to let it play out. But I would have a tight one point stop, probably even less than that, at this particular point, 20.95 CLF. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So let, let me just sum up because uh, someone said, could, could you just sum it up? <laughs> yes, I can just sum it up. It's a very select market. Bifurcated is really the word they use in Wall Street. But at the same time, you cannot ignore strength. Now, I don't think that you can talk about, I just see an email just came in here, Pelosi sets Thursday, and I heard it I just briefly the other day, I'm trying to listen, not listen to news as, as much as I can, uh, the other day and said, uh, she said, I will not put it to a vote until I know I've got the votes. And she's been in the business a long, long time. So if she sets Thursday as the voting, I think we can see some choppiness. I don't say that's that's been my thing all the time. That this is not a joke. You've got to, you can't have a you can't have Democrats vote entirely one way and Dem Republicans the exact opposite. When it comes to trillions of dollars, it's really important that you have an agreement that you make a compromise. It's even though we know the compromise is always terrible, because the, 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 what happens is the fine print becomes the, the big print over two or three years. That's number one. Number two is I always say everything that gets voted on should have a time limit. You should have to re-vote because times change, everything changes. In two years' time, what, are you going to have the same parameters? You don't. So you want to re-vote on all these things. Anyway, let's get out of that. So let's just make it as simple as possible. The Dow 
is bumping up against resistance. Just hit that red line right there, 35,061. That's the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. This is fabulous action in the Dow. It's helped because the yields are going higher. Okay, the S&P, and I thought the Dow would stall at the 34,800 area. I thought it would not break 35,000. Well, we, today we did just by a fraction. We're under it right now at 34,968. The S&P, you can see, that's the card I was looking at, stalling out, doesn't arch over, doesn't pull back, and the pullback is where we decide are we going to be buying. Look at the QQQs, we remain short of QQQs. This is what we discussed, that what you know. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Great programming all day. We've gone off to uh, Tom O'Brien, Jimmy Sauce, and Sophie Dinah Club. Quick program all day. Stay tuned. Building wealth trading.